My name is Victoria Warner and I am the owner and founder of Rowlett Family Law located in Rowlett, Texas. And I want to talk to you today about the different things that you would consider when you are um, looking to retain an attorney to handle your divorce. You want to retain an attorney that um, handles primarily family law or if not primarily at least 33% or a third of their practice is family law. My practice consists of 90% family law and the only other little 10% thing that I do is I represent nurses before the Board of Nursing in Austin because I am a registered nurse as well. You want to make sure that the attorney that you're looking to hire has at least five years and preferably 10 years of experience in the area of family law. I have over 20 years of experience in that area and I learn things every day. You want to make sure that the attorney that you're looking to hire stays up on the area of family law and that they get their continuing education in the area of family law. The state bar requires us to have 15 hours a year. I voluntarily do twice that, which is 30, and all of those are in the area of family law. You want to retain an attorney for your divorce that practices regularly in the courts and before the judges that your matter might be pending. You don't want to retain somebody that never practices in the county that your, um, that your case is, is pending in. They won't be able to give you a good a feel for what you might be able to expect from that, from that judge and from that court. You want to ask about fees. Um, do, do, their, do their hourly rates include things such as mileage, parking, faxes, um, certified letters? My hourly rate includes all that. I decided many years ago, probably over 10, that keeping track of copies and postage, parking fees, all that sort of thing, was very cumbersome and almost more time consuming than the money I was getting recouped for it. So I just decided to include that all in my hourly rate. You want to know how your um, attorney communicates with their clients. You want to make sure that they're available in whichever method you prefer to communicate in. Some, uh, some clients prefer only telephone, some clients prefer email. I have a few clients that prefer text messaging. Make sure that the attorney that you're looking to hire will communicate with you in your preferred communication method. Technology, make sure that the attorney that you're looking to hire um, is is able to do emails, is able to text, and make sure that they have access to some sort of a laptop computer, a tablet. My preferred is, is an iPad. I bring that to court with me every time I go, and it never ceases to amaze me how the iPad has has uh, given me an advantage against the other side with regards to things I can look up. Um, about a month ago, I was going to not take my iPad because I didn't think there was anything that might be relevant to it. Threw it in anyway just because it's my normal practice. And sure enough, we were trying to figure out where the halfway point might be between a mom and a dad to exchange a child for visitation. So I was able to plug in mom's address, dad's address. It gave us exact halfway point. Then we were able to go on to Google Earth and look at what surrounded that area and pick a place that the parties could meet at. So you just never know. You want to look at the, um, the communication skill. Not every attorney is going to match every client, just like you're not friends with everybody, you don't associate with everybody. You have to be able to communicate and trust your attorney, so make sure that you talk to that attorney and meet with them in person. I think that's very important. I've had a few cases where I have not been able to do that because my client has resided out of state, but I did talk to them on the telephone. Nowadays there is Skype availability, FaceTime availability, so at least you can have a more intimate communication than, than just over the phone or through emails. Um, the other thing is you want to look at is the um, where the office is located at. If you if you work downtown, that might be okay for you to retain an attorney that is in one of the downtown towers, but just be aware that it's going to take a lot more time for you to park, uh, get into that uh, tower, get in the elevator, uh, see your attorney, and then reverse the process. Um, I'm located very conveniently, um, probably closer to where people live. They're able to um, stop in, park out front, run in, drop off, or pick up whatever they need to do, and it's much more convenient. There's no 
there's no parking fees, there's no traffic to worry about. So you also need to look at that on um, convenience. What does that mean to you? You also want to uh, look at whether your attorney has at least uh, support staff to answer the phone and answer questions when, when your attorney is either in court or mediation or out of the office for some reason and also to be able to draft documents at a reduced fee over what the attorney is charging per hour. So if the attorney that you're looking to retain does not have any support staff, be aware that you're probably gonna pay that hourly rate to draft documents that um, if that attorney had a support staff, they would be able to do that for you at a much reduced rate. So those are just some things that you need to look at when you're looking to retain a divorce attorney. I think I do a great job and I would be happy to uh, talk to you about uh, representing you. My website is www.rowlettfamilylaw.com. There are a lot of resources on that website. My email is victoria at rowlettfamilylaw.com. If you care to send me an email, we can um, begin our discussion that way and see whether you might be a good fit for our firm. Thanks. Thank you.